All right, so today she's backed in backwards, <clears throat> mainly because in Florida it's been raining really bad up here in the Gulf area. There's a potential tropical storm. And my garage likes to flood a little bit here in the front because there's still no gutters on the house. So I don't want to be laying down in potential water. So we're gonna jack her up. We're gonna change the trailing arm bushing. I could not remember the name of the trailing arm last video. So I got two energy suspension bushings for it. I got an ASR subframe bush uh, brace and their 24 millimeter sway bar. That's what's going on today. So basically gonna jack the car up, take the wheels off, uh, drop the trailing arm and go from there. If you have not watched it, Garage Build Hondas has a beautiful, really can't ask for much better on how to install the rear trailing arm bushings. So I'm gonna kind of go through that a little bit, but you can't beat this video. Great dude, I don't know him, but if you're in my area, I would definitely stop by and say, hey. And uh, then the ASR brace, which is pretty self-explanatory, but let's, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start by removing the brake line here. I'm gonna loosen that, pull the metal clip out so I can keep the brake line attached here. And then I'm gonna go underneath. And then follow the trailing arm here, you're gonna find the e-brake cable, which I believe is a 12. I'm gonna remove that so the e-brake cable can kinda of just be loose here. And then follow it all the way back again. You're gonna find the tow arm that I'm also gonna replace. There's two 14s. Gonna follow the one over here, more towards the inside of the car. I'm gonna remove that all the way. The one over here I'm going to release, but I won't be able to pull it all the way out until the trailing arm comes down. So I'll break it loose, and then I'll come back here and remove these two 17s that are holding the act, that are actually holding the bushing in that we're gonna replace. And then once those are removed, you'll be able to swing the trailing arm down and remove that last toe arm there. And once that's out, you'll remove the, the bottom bolt here holding the control arm to the trailing arm. Once I remove the top bolt here, the entire control arm will be free and I will lower it to the ground. All right, so last bolt to remove is this camber kit bolt here. Now when I remove that, the whole entire trailing arm is gonna be free. I'm gonna kind of drop it on the ground and just shimmy it around. All right, so now it's free, it hasn't fallen yet, but it will kind of tip as you see. So I'm just gonna gently lower it to the ground. All right, before I even move it any further. So here's the bushing we're gonna be replacing. You can look at it already. Look at that. I, <laughs> I just tried to move it and it just saved me half the effort, it just fell right out. So. As you can see, that bushing was super shot. You could probably grab a press or something and try to press it out or some kind of puller kit. I'm just gonna grab your trusty old hammer and just, just kind of hit it, work it back and forth, and it should come out the front. There she is. So now we've already got a lot of bushing material still inside here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a torch, heat this up, and the rubber will essentially just Kind of fall itself out. I'm gonna grab a flathead to kind of push it out, but you'll see. So you get the idea. Basically, just keep heating it and turning it. All right, so that basically drew it in there. In case you're curious how far to draw it in. I drew this to the point where it's just, it's just kind of flush with the top here. It's kind of about where mine was to begin with. So now we're gonna 
this aside, but we're going to reuse that to pull the bushing in. Take your bushing, grab the supply energy suspension lube that it should have came with, um, and basically just lather Use the whole, so my two bushings came with one tube, I basically split it in half. Half the tube on one, half the tube on this one. So this is the remainder of what I have left. So I'm going to use the rest of this tube on here. All right. All right, so essentially the same install as how we just did that. How we did the sleeve there, I'm just gonna kinda Hold that there for a second. Grab this cup again. Grab this collar. Notice it's about the same size as that. Get this started a little bit. This will be a lot easier to drive in. Make sure that it's kind of centered. Roughly I'm going in. And away we go. You might have some excess to kind of squeeze that around it. If you do, I'm gonna grab it and put it in here. I don't have too much actually. I do have some, but not as much as I would have liked. So anything that's left in that tube, just kind of lather that up inside there. Press the bushing in there, you've lathered it up, grab the guy here, you took the material off as well. You're gonna have a circle and you're gonna have an oval here. Oval side is gonna come closest to you, so it's gonna sit in there like that. Um, I'm all out of that grease. I already lathered the hole up in there, but I'm going to just simply Wow, there's some, some of this white lithium all over. I just put these so the holes are facing upwards. And it shouldn't take a lot. I'm gonna lightly hit it with a hammer. Don't get crazy with it. You don't wanna distort this by any means. All right, we'll leave it there. And if you're off a little bit, once it's underneath the car, you should be able to kind of tap it in again and move her about. All right, so here's your um, your other toe arm. This is your OEM toe arm. This is how they adjust toe up inside the wheel. So in case you don't know how it works, this is up there. There's a bolt here, bolt here. This bolt is solid. The bolt over here has a hole, but you can move this and you can give it. So as it comes forward and back, basically it moves the, the rear trailing arm directional and it in return will change the toe of your wheel. So I had already done the alignment in previous videos and I use these and it worked out. I already figured while I'm down here, let me do one last thing and I'm getting, while well, I'm putting in blocks, adjustable toe arms. Uh, the advantage of these is, you can see when they're both sitting in there, this one, when you loosen this bolt here inside the car, you essentially pry and you'd push this and you'd retighten it down. This, once these are just both there, I can essentially loosen these nuts and you would just turn the center here and it would push the arm back and forth. Really easy for an adjustment. So these go in the exact same way that you took these out. Um, just put these in there, line these bolts up, get them tight, and I'm gonna do an alignment afterwards. This is definitely assuming you're doing an alignment because regardless when you pull these off, you're not gonna get this exactly back where, where you were. You could try to do, put some lines and cricket marks, but I don't think you'd be able to do it. So I'll do an alignment after the fact. All right, so an earlier step now to do the sway bar here and the brace. I already unbolted my sway bar here from the lower control arm. We are then two 14 millimeters up here, holding the bracket on. You notice the sway bar comes forward now here. So I'm gonna go to the opposing side and do the exact same thing. We're gonna grab the Allen head bolts. Should be four of them. You got these nuts. So, I'm not making these tight yet. I'm kind of tighten everything down once it's installed. 
So once that's there, now we're gonna take this out of the car. We're gonna lower our lower control arm bolts here. And we're gonna feed this on top of it. It's gonna come through here. All right, starting with the other side installed, so we're gonna take that lower control arm bolt again, feed it through this bracket here, and it's gonna go through back through your lower control arm. I've got a pry bar here because as I took it out, as I took the bolt out, my lower control arm kind of moved inward, so I'm just gonna kind of pry it outward. I got a little light here because it's kind of dark. I'm trying to using it to see when I can, when she's relatively aligned. Kind of got it started. There we go. All right. All right, so I just finished the passenger side. I ended up not taking the exhaust off. I ended up just lowering the hangers and it was out of my way. So I'm gonna take a 516 drill bit here. And you're gonna go through each one of these holes. There's one, this one to the top hole, bottom hole. You're gonna take the two supplied bolts here. Might be a light little burr on the other side there. Go. Now we're going to go into the trunk area. All right, so there are serrations on the bottom of these nuts to help tighten them, but I'm going to leave this wrench here. I'm going to go underneath, tighten it. All right, so if you're installing the sway bar like myself, you're going to have a couple pieces here. So it's also going to come with some supplied lube again, just like the just like the uh, trailing arm bushings. So I'm going to take some of the lube here. I'm going to lather it all on the inside of this hole here. And also lather it on the outside. So once you've lathered on the inside, if you notice there's a hat on this side and no hat on that side, the hat is gonna go up against this bar here and the bushing is split. So you'll be able to, be able to pry it apart. There you go. We're gonna do the same thing for the other one. All right, so when you look at the actual brackets here now, they've got arrows on them. The arrows are gonna be pointing towards the outside. Again, the arrow is gonna point to the outside of it. And it has a little recess in there, which is... All right, you should be able to just take it, kind of slide it top down. There we go. All right, now we're gonna take this. And we're gonna go pull this up into the back of the car. All right, so here's the rest of the hardware. For the end links, I'm just going to kind of put some white lithium grease on the threads. I'm going to take just a regular nut. You're going to have a <clears throat> locking nut. You're looking for a regular old nut. Thread it. Once it's on there, you grab the other guy, like so. So you're going to want to thread that as far as it'll go. And I say that because you want them both to be as equal as possible from the other driver's side to the passenger side. So once that's there, this piece that here, that's the threaded shaft. Take a bolt. You're gonna grab a concave little spacer guy like so. It'll go through like this. You grab the other concave spacer, it's gonna go on like so. And this side will get a lock nut on it. We're not gonna put it on for the moment. Bottom side, very similar. Spacer, little concave washer thing. Then you're gonna grab one of the big ones. So it's essentially gonna look like that when it's assembled. So I'm gonna grab that end there, it looks like so. Stick it through my first set of holes. I'm going to just thread the lock washer on there gently. So once that's on there, I'm gonna grab the bottom assembly again. And it's going to be bolt, little spacer guy like so, 
coming through and spacer guy like so. So my Scum 2 control arm has got two holes in it here that are threaded here. I'm going to go to the one that makes it the most parallel. So for this case, it's going to be the hole that's closest to the wheel. All right, that's it for this video. Um, so training fluid's changed to see if it leaks now. I just did the drive. I'm not going to check now. I'm not going to wait for this video to come out to tell you the results. I'll wait till next time. Fingers crossed it doesn't leak because both crush washers are changed. Um, I did start with a quick mock-up. The fog, it's in there, but it's not totally mounted. We're going to figure that out still. There is a hole that I drilled. We're going to see how I'm going to mount it. I'm not 100% sure. I got the relay, the wiring, everything. That's kind of my next project. Um, I did just check. You probably won't be able to see. Uh, nope, no good view. Nonetheless, some blue uh, grease up in the wheel. I noticed I blew that ball joint out on the tie rod. So it kind of annoyed me. Um, I, the car has got, I think, 460 miles as of right now, or 470, whatever the heck I just said. It's, it's in that realm. Um, kind of irritated that it just blew. Maybe because it's lowered. I don't know the case is. The alignment's been great. So, um, out of frustration, I decided to order some spherical K tuned ones. So that will be coming sometime this week. That will go in the car. Hopefully that's next time and the fog lights. And then again, I have to attack the interior. Uh, I've been talking to some buddies, just looking for seat suggestions. As of right now, maybe some red Recaros to kind of go with a little bit of the red that the uh, shift knob has on top of it and the steering wheel. And a auto power bar that will be black, harnesses black. That's the idea as of right now. So um, car's still running well except for that little small training leak that I'm trying to just figure out what it is and I'm hoping it's resolved. Other than that, oh, the rear suspension's on. I just drove it around a little bit. It, it definitely, the back end feels much more, uh, what's the term to use? Uh, the idea was for me to see if I can get it to, I don't want to say oversteer, but be a little more loose in the rear end as a, compared to understeering. And I have not tracked the car yet. When I do, there will be a video. Um, but maybe all the stuff I just put on there is not going to be what I want to deal with. But uh, as of right now, it feels a little more uh, solid. I guess you can see in the back, it's just turning the wheel back and forth real abruptly. It, the rear kind of just whatever. Um, and that's not a good example. But nonetheless, stuff's on the rear. Um, and I did find there is an SCCA track about an hour and a half away from here that does SCCA, SCCA events. So that will maybe in the future, once it gets a little more cooler, I mean, it is, it is hotter than Satan out here. And uh, maybe some fall time, we'll see what this is. Will it be boosted by then or not? I don't know. The dilemma again still is buy a Goa Auto Works kit right now or get a welder in here and just make myself my own kit, which I feel like I've done pretty much everything on this car minus the paint. So it would be kind of an added bonus to say, hey, I built the, the turbo kit. So that's it. Again, anyone's got any ideas or things I should add or not? Because um, there's that. I still need to take it back for paint too to correct that stuff. So maybe that'll be also next. I don't know. Anywho, hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Um, Again, hopefully this is inspiring somebody. And until uh, next video.